really lined up and moved around and switched around and oh technology this is legends of the drowned isles the great confusion the second campaign in this strange little homebrew world of omatia that i created i'm mark the encaffeinated one host gm and largely the one who scribbles behind the scenes i have with me my players for this particular campaign go ahead and introduce yourself starting on my left with silas Hi, my name is Pat. I am playing Silas. Silas Marsh. Momentarily forget his last name. Silas uh, Marsh. Who is a cultist, delusionist person uh, now, and uh, who has just entered a lost temple with his buddies. Man, woman, person, camera, TV. TV, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marie, and I'm playing Annie, who is a human rogue, and yeah. And I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrek, half-orc cleric. And I am playing TV and camera. <laughs> little recap to get us back to where we were. With the sudden appearance of Silas's cousin-in-law, Luther, the group decided to help find the cousin Mira, Mira had been seeing visions of a place in the woods for weeks, and she had described it to Luther. He was certain that she had finally gone out to find it after coming back from fishing that evening in a strange state. Luther described the place as some sort of broken tower to be found by observing a series of landmarks. Starting from the Royal Road, they were to find an ancient dead tree laying across their path. From there, there would be a standing stone to indicate their way. There would be four trees arched to the top, forming a covering over a pathway from there. Then there would be an ancient cobblestone road, nearly lost to time, which led them to the remains of an old stone wall. And finally, beyond all that, there would be the broken tower. Using their different skills, each of them found their ways together through the woods, following the vague clues to a distinct trail. From the side of the road, it had been buried for a long time, but once Annie... Uh, thought it was much like the Royal Road, well-crafted and maintained. The tower looked like it had been broken at the top. As they approached, they heard voices speaking in common. Two of them seemed to belong to a man and a woman who were urged by a third hollow voice to go quickly and retrieve the prize. The group approached cautiously and saw the shape of a man vanish under a strange blanket of shadow. It spoke with them, suggesting that they might work together, that they might have common goals. And when all of them had entered the region of shadow, it attacked them, seemingly turning the shadow into glass. Medric erupted into a ball of pure sunshine, dismissing the shadow cloak and revealing the odd figure. It had the shape of a person, but nothing of its features could be seen beneath the dark cloak but twin gleams of diamond-shaped light where its eyes should be. Cursing, it fled from them into the tower, Inside, they found little left of the tower itself, but a closed entrance which led downward like a root cellar door. Through it, they discovered an underground tunnel of stone filled with water deep enough to seep over their boots. No sign of the shadow man was present. The tunnel led to a larger complex beyond stylized curved stone doors and stone grates in their bottom halves. The grates allowed water to flow, and as they moved through the building, more and more water seemed to pour in. Inside, they discovered ancient ruins whose statues, stone furniture, pedestals, shelving urns, all lay in shards. Nothing recognizable remained in the frescoes and patterned sculptures, leading them to conclude that everything had been deliberately destroyed. Among the rubble, they found members of the previous group, dead. Their wounds were severe, especially on their legs and torso. Something dangerous was down here, and it made Luther worry even more for Mira. On each of the dead, they found a few weapons, a few coins, and most surprisingly, a hidden brooch with a small embedded diamond. With each room and hallway further into the complex, the water grew deeper. In a room filled with shelves and broken pottery, they discovered another of the other group, this time barely hanging on to a thread of life. As they went over and Medric hell healed them a bit, a disturbance in the water gave them warning. Something in the water surged to attack. And that's where we begin in the non-surprise round, as Annie was not surprised. The creature wasn't really hiding that much either. I've added, uh, to make it a little easier, I've added 
uh, roughly where the shelves are. Considering that most of them are broken, you can actually move through those spaces, but everything in the room essentially is difficult terrain. Remember, too, that about two feet of water now fills this room. Uh, doesn't, that doesn't affect the movement as so much at the moment, but if you are looking for something two meters down the ground, it's going to be a little harder to see. Um, what we will do is I will bring up an initiative tracker just one moment. I can remember how to do that. There we go. I will clear it off. And as you roll for initiative, if you have a character sheet on roll 20, make sure to select your character first and then roll. I actually remembered. <laughs> and I have Luther there as well. I just remembered. Do I have you have to use the actual initiative button for it to go in. There's an initiative button. If you, yeah. yeah. If you, right. yeah, between armor class and speed, you just press on the initiative word. Realized I do not have a specific Luther sheet, but that's pretty close. Hey, it's Medrick. Hey, it's cool. Silas. Silas, go first. Let's get rid of this guy. Yes, yeah, Silas, go first. <laughs> Very possibly. Sadly, I probably count as surprised, so I don't get to go in the first round. <laughs> Is the bandit I healed last week? Is she? Does she get a roll too? Yep, just adding her there now. Good. Okay. Uh, My initiative is eleven. Okay. <clears throat> I rolled a three. Oh no! <laughs> because my luck. <laughs> that happened all the time with Kijima. He had like a plus eight or more, and it just kept rolling ones and twos and threes. That is, yeah, uh, not last week I rolled a one. <laughs> Still not going well, though. So. Okay. Uh, it is, in fact, the bandit who you uh, healed, who has not had a chance to introduce herself. Uh, which goes first, just slightly ahead of Silas. Um, Does she have any uh, ranged weapons? <laughs> Most of them had bows that were broken, but if she's like alive, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping her bow is not broken. <laughs> she does not have a ranged weapon. Uh, but Medric, standing beside her, what you see her do is uh, reach up and kind of grasp onto her collar and, and bow her head for a second in, in concentration. That is her turn. Uh, now, I will describe the thing that, that popped up out of the water, which only Annie really sees clearly. Um, Silas would be able to see kind of behind him, uh, if he turned around, to be able to see um, a little bit. It is a creature which is only just popping out of the water. It's that short. Um, what you really see is a, a roundish domed head with two bulbous eyes on, its, on the top of its head, which sort of peer up out of the water. Um, Annie, where you're standing right beside it and a little bit of glow coming from uh, Vice, um, you make out a sort of, obviously distorted by the water itself, but sort of green bulbish uh, body below the water. It reminds you not entirely unlike a toad, a giant toad, about uh, two and a half feet tall. Um, but you can see it's, it's, uh, it's uh, thin razor-like claws kind of moving in the water underneath, which typically toads don't really have. So, just to let you know. The bandit has done the, her concentration. Silas, you were looking at the door and hear the confusion behind you. What would you like to do? Well, I think I'm going to uh, buff up my staff, Step over next to it and take a whack at it. All right. uh, that's a 20. That's a wicked hit for certain. Smack. For minimum damage. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. As you're going to bring uh, the staff down, it cracks across the top of this head, kind of hitting it between the two pairs of, or two eyes on the top of its head. 
uh, and kind of it bobs down below the water from the force for a second. Then I'm going to step back. Uh, Does it, it attack going, me? It is going to try. Okay. Uh, let's see. It can do one of these. Uh, yes. As it spins around, does a 17 hit? Yes, just barely. And you feel across the your your lower legs as a massive slash of these razor-like claws cuts yeah. it through. Another one of those and I'm out. I would suggest not getting hit by one of those. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's a, it's a not much I get to do about that. That was your Let's bonus go. action and move. Mm -hmm. I think you might have a little more movement. Oh, oh yeah. Remember, this is this is difficult one. terrain, actually, so you don't. What's that? It's difficult terrain. So okay. you actually just made it there. Yep. Okay. Luther. Luther's going to try to make his way over there. You gave him a dagger, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have a particular character sheet for him. Of all the things I made, that was not one of them. Uh, but he'll move over to where the shelf is and try to stab on through. Um, again, we've got... This should really be here. There we go. Um, I've hopefully lined up at least most of this map. It seems to keep shifting on me. But I will give him an attempt to make... Now, this says scimitar. It's actually a dagger. Remarkably enough, it's exactly the same damage. So, go figure. Uh, actually, it should be a d4. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I will... Yep. Let me just do this real quick because I actually know how to, I've been making these uh, NPC sheets now enough that uh, I can do this remarkably quickly. Um, there we go. Boom. As he swings at it. Uh, and hits. He did damage. He heard it. Hey, Luther, stay back. He did one point. He did one point. Uh, is that even possible? Wait, that's not possible. If he doesn't have a stat bonus, yeah. Um, Roll to one. Oh, yeah, he doesn't. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I'll have to make a specific character sheet for him at some point later. But but yes, he stabs through uh, and kind of uh, growls at the beast, which kind of growls back at him. And he kind of moves back a bit from where he was seeing it. Medric. All right, I will take three steps. So it's probably like max movement in difficult terrain. Uh, there's a shelf there you're moving through. Yeah, you Is can move through the shelves. They're basically broken. That's That kind of counts yeah. as difficult terrain. Okay. Um, so as I move, for a fact, I'll just like shove the shelf out of the way, but it takes an extra like 0.5 seconds. So. <laughs> and here I will turn on the fire shield and take a swing with the warhammer. Okay. I have a mount now. You have a, a mount? A mouse. Oh. <laughs> Uh, 12. 12 is a hit. Woo! Whoa, hold up. Things just went crazy on my screen. Oh, man. This mouse is awful. <laughs> okay. Let me plenty reposition of, the map. Plenty of technological issues. Today. It's like the moment I even nudge the mouse wheel, everything just goes crazy. You know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to use a trackpad. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's reliable. Okay. I swing for damage. Plus strength. Ha! Ooh, nice. And oh, the shield almost... can only be, it can't be used like the, the same round that, that I turn it on to attack on that round, can it? Or... Uh, it takes a, doesn't it take a bonus action to activate the shield? Okay. And then you can attack as a bonus action with it. So you can't All have right. two bonus actions. Well, it's going to get through next round. All right. Uh, it's looking pretty good. The the, 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 uh, the hammer kind of hisses a little bit as it moves the water with the, the small amount of heat that it gives off. Uh, Annie. Hello. This thing was probably intent um. on hurting you badly when you didn't see it, but you saw it. Let everybody know. 
but I saw it. Uh, so I will try to stab down using vice because I have vice in my hand as a light source right now. Mm -hmm. So that's a plus seven to hit. So 12 plus seven is 19. A very definite hit. Okay. And then it has lost hit points, right? It has. Yes. Cool. It is so... not below half, however. Hmm? It is not below half, however. It's if I'm below half, that it takes a third. Oh, right, right. I was reading that and I read it backwards. Look at me trying to prepare. Yeah. I should just stop doing that. <laughs> if, if they're missing HP, they, they get the extra D4. If I'm below half, they get a third. Right, right. Uh, so that is three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then uh, sneak attack is 3D6. Uh, six. So that is 15. Yeah, 15. All right. The so from its remaining 14 hit points, you take 15 of them. Yeah. And as you stab downward with vice, it kind of flashes su suddenly as you kind of stab downward right between the eyes once again and kind of push downward into the water. And then there's almost like there's nothing pushing against your, your knife as you look. And its remains have sort of bubbled out and flowed into the water, dissipating quickly. I suppose that wasn't too long in combat. I could have done that last time, but I wasn't prepared. <laughs> But each Silas is... will poke his staff around the area where it disappeared. Uh, nothing but the broken pottery which litters the ground beneath it. Okay, Just that's strange. The, the floor is like here. Then he winces as he steps on his leg. Silas, are you hurt? Yeah, he got me when I backed up. Damn thing. Um, I'll cast a level two cure wounds on you. Well, thank so, you. Thank Moving you thing. to stand beside him, I'm assuming. Uh, Silas, make an arcana check, please. Okay. Okay, yeah. 17. As Medric uh, utters the words of healing uh, from, uh, from Ignis, and you feel that that odd sense of warmth that passes through you when he heals, um, it's almost like you have uh, a slight skin burn, uh, sunburn for a moment or two. Um, you're kind of still poking the water a little bit with your staff and thinking about this creature. And if it was a living, breathing creature, if it was a natural thing of the world, um, it should not have vanished like that. And so you quickly come to the conclusion that whatever it was, it had been summoned. Mm, it was I think not a natural creature. It might be something that that caster we met last time summoned. He summoned a thing back when we first met him. Um, I'll ask uh, the girl that's holding on to the brooch. Uh, let me... hey, are there any more? Um, she kind of has her eyes still closed for the moment, and her eyes open wide, and her pupils now glow with tiny diamond-shaped lights her voice is the same as before um kind of uh, uh deep and resonant but her cadence changes somewhat to a somewhat more familiar one as you realize that the words are coming from the diamond even if the voice is coming from the bandit i can assure you that's not one of mine i don't know what that thing was other than dangerous well, are they any more? I don't know. I'm just in as much in the dark as you are. I was surprised to see my friends so decimated. I'll speak to them later and see if they know anything more. Luther's kind of looking over at the at the uh, strange bandit and kind of wondering. You can also sort of hear an echo. It's one of those things where you're not really sure if you're hearing it or as much as imagining it, but almost an echo in the, the bandit's voice of that, that smoother, 
a hollow voice you heard before. And Luther seems to be reacting to the doubling of it. This isn't something from the mother, I, I'm, I'm sure of it. It wouldn't attack us, right, Silas? I don't think so, not if it was sent by her. But this temple, I don't think it's one of the mothers. Nothing looks familiar. Oh, it's much, much older than that. But you wouldn't remember it. No one does. Except maybe me. And Who Catherine. Are you? you can call me the Diamond. It's an appellation I've come to be accustomed to. And you are how old? Honestly, I'm not sure if I even know anymore. Time doesn't move in the same way sometimes. But old enough to remember that this place was once dedicated to something else. He's what was trying to distract here? us. Silas goes to the door and tries to figure out how to open it. Okay. The door looks much the same as the other ones had, and you saw how Annie had plied the door. Uh, if you have tools or something else you can use, you could try. Hmm. Seeing him go to the door, I'll, I'll, I can also go over. You, certainly you see him pull a candle out of his pocket and think for a moment about, could I use this? And then no. <laughs> he backs up and lets uh, Annie take a look at it. It's a simple matter now. You make the roll, but it, it's with advantage. You've already made this a number of times. You know how these doors work. Unless it's damaged or otherwise um, broken up, it would be hard to fail. It's 15. Yeah. yeah. Once again, it's this strange mechanism that's worn away, even more worn than the outer ones were. Uh, make a perception check, actually, along with that, as you're fiddling with the different spaces and your fingers kind of move into behind some of the, the reliefs and pull out different things. Got a one? Natural one. Okay, then. Yes. Um, or I think a two. You're kind yes, of two. looking at it, and, and uh, you prick your finger on one of the sharper edges of the inside. No damage taken as far as actual numbers, but it's one of those annoying kind of hair hair uh, line kind of cuts along the inner finger it's gonna hurt if i get anything like acidic in it yeah yeah make sure you don't eat any chips with that hand for the next day <laughs> a question well, to mark uh yeah when the diamond said earlier nobody remembers how old this is except one person and possibly me what was the first person um is it cut out a little bit when, when oh, you were saying oh, it? Oh, yeah. Uh, it named Catheron. Oh, okay. So it knows Catheron. Okay. Um, How do you I know just... Catheron? Oh, we go way back. Not exactly on the same side, but we have different ideas of what happens next. She's content to turn her back and fade into history. I'm not quite so content. Well, I don't think she's turning her back. Then maybe you don't know her as well as you thought you did. You open up this door and it leads into another room. Forgive me again, I didn't have time to address this room, but I will describe it. It looks like uh, workbenches along the walls with uh, racks where tools once stood upward. Uh, the water itself is now probably about two and a half feet deep in here. And again, getting deeper the further in you go, it may indicate that there's a small decline in the floors here, or as you saw before with the water built up over the grates, uh, sometimes it builds up a little higher on the, in, on the inside of this than on the outside. Um, as you kind of walk around the room and take a close look at it, um, you notice these these uh, workstations that were there. Um, 
at first it looks like broken uh, stone, but then you realize it's half-formed stone. This room was probably used to carve some of the reliefs you've seen on the walls, perhaps carve out some of the urns. There's a spot here which could be a kiln or may have once been a kiln, but now the fires are long since cooled and the ashes are kind of spread around the room. Um, the tools that you're seeing seem uh, mostly uh, um, rusted. Some of them are even bent that are on the, 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 the benches. Are you taking some time to look at this room, or are you going to pass right through it? Um, Silas would give it a quick look, but mostly yeah. just to see if uh, if Mira is there, and if she if there's nothing that looks like it might be Mira, he'd be heading to the other door. She, Annie would do a quick walk around. Okay, Silas, as you step in, there's no signs of life in here except perhaps the water itself which seems to move slightly as you move through um for annie make uh, an investigation roll because you're going to poke through some of this 14. 14. my first roll that is double digits on the die <laughs> <laughs> as you're kind of poking through and you're you're, you're wielding a vice to give you a bit of light uh, and as medrick kind of comes into the room himself slightly glowing uh, a little bit of, of light uh, glints off of something in the water beneath one of the benches. I'd go take a look at what it is. Okay. The water here is deep enough that it's difficult. Um, t remind me if Silas did, in fact, ca cast water breathing. I think you did. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I thought so. Everyone can water breathe, and if I remember correctly, Silas is not impeded by the water, just by the uh, crap on the ground. Okay. Um, and actually, the the uh, unnamed bandit slash the diamond follows behind all of you, cautiously. Uh, Luther's kind of m moving through, and kind of like Silas, moving almost directly across the other side of the room, making his way. Annie, as you kind of uh, dip your head below the water, it's a little bit unnerving at first because the water itself is kind of cool uh, and kind of brackish. Uh, but uh, reassured by Silas's earlier uh, spell, you cautiously dip below and find yourself able to breathe freely, although it's a little bit labored at first breathing water as it's a little heavier, uh, but you find yourself with no problems whatsoever. Uh, the little bit of glinting uh, you see turns into uh, what looks like a silver, uh, uh, a silver. A silver handle. what? Sorry. A silver handle. I'm sorry, I, that was me going. Uh, that was not a, a lost word. A silver handle of some kind, and when you tug on it, um, it reveals uh, a a broken wrapped leather bundle. The leather itself is deteriorated over time. Uh, and onto the floor of the room falls uh, several bright, shiny-looking tools. There looks to be a uh, medium-sized hammer, uh, a set of uh, silverish chisels, a pair of tongs, and an ornate, ornate silver set square, which is a, a triangle measurement, kind of uh, right triangle on one side, uh, stamped with a dwarven emblem. Presumably a clan emblem of some kind. They seem to be in remarkably good shape. The chisels all seem to be still sharp even as you kind of run your finger over the edge. I'll um, put them into my bag. Okay. As you kind of pull them through, the leather falls apart. Uh, the leather that was holding them together in this sort of rolled up bundle. But each piece, uh, while a little bit heavier um, than, say, a, a dagger... Uh, because they seem to be solid quality tools. Um, weighs about 20 pounds in total. So it's a pretty heavy uh, pile in the back of your bag. Silas, once again, you find yourself faced with the same kind of door. This one uh, worn even further. Uh, almost uh, worn smooth, and most of the symbology that was on the other doors is kind of washed away. You're going to take a dagger and start 
trying to do something approximating to what Annie was doing before. Okay. Make a sleight of hand roll at disadvantage because you're using a dagger. Actually, hey, no, I'm actually trained in that. Never mind with the disadvantage then. You'd know what to do with it. Wow. Okay. So not quite as deftly uh, initially as what Annie had done, but having watched what she's done, and maybe with a bit more urgency, you jam the dagger into the place where she normally had stuck her fingers, and you can hear a satisfying click as you lever the dagger up. Uh, the uh, lock makes a very solid ka-chunk sound this time, a little bit different from ones you had had before. Uh, behind you on the other side, you've noticed the other door kind of coming to a close, and then it makes that little click. Like the other doors, it seems to lock automatically. Uh, but then hmm. you release the lock in this. That's room. very similar to the Sea Devil compound we were in with the doors. Hmm. With one major exception, which is the grills on the bottom. Hmm. Uh, a look over at the diamond possessed bandit and say, You may not wish to come much further. If the water level goes up significantly, the rest of us can breathe. You can't. Or I'm presuming that you can't. I'm flattered by your concern. I'm sure my friend here can swim. But I'll keep an eye on it. Thank you. Hey, Diamond. Uh, I'm assuming you've seen this entire temple already. Or do you know the layout? If so, which way should we go? He's trying to keep us from... Uh, he's His people are trying to capture Mira before we can get to her. Anything he says is going to be a lie. That's a rather yeah. presumption. He's not on our side. I should say something utterly truthful now, just to confuse you, I suppose. But it's really all I'm just about... Not <laughs> it's really all about timing. And you see no particular movement or direction from them. I presume you swing open the door? Yep. Uh, also, uh, if Annie had been looking, she might notice that uh, Silas opened the door. He seemed to be very good at manipulating the dagger, but not so much at picking the lock. Uh, so basically, Thief might recognize Thief uh, in that he is definitely someone trained in sleight of hand but not in picking locks. So he's kind of more like a card sharp or a uh, street hustler in training. Uh, but yeah, it would go through. Annie's specialty is getting out of places, not <laughs> anything else. <laughs> As you swing the door uh, inward away from you, more water flows in. Um, quite a, a torrent as well, making it almost three feet deep at this point. Um, for most of you, it's difficult to see much for details, but you can make out a faint blue glow across the room from you. There are a number of pillars that are holding up the ceiling that are causing lots of shadows from the blue glow uh, in the center of the room. The room seems to be fairly large, looking at... Uh, Looks like 60 feet across, so um, Silas, you can just make out the other side. Uh, and Annie, you're seeing about half of the room in shadow. Um, you can hear the water lapping up around the room, and as you do, you can also hear the sound muffled somewhat of, uh, of metal hitting metal. Not in a striking way, more that it's rubbing up against each other or, or banging every so slightly. But there's no lights in the room itself. Now, Silas can see up to about three quarters of the way across the room. Does he Good see point. anything? Good point. So what you can actually make out is a little more detail about the glow. It seems to be coming from some sort of altar or sarcophagus or large box in the center of the room um, crisscrossed uh, the, 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 the blue glow seems to be coming from a line around its midpoint around its uh, horizontal midpoint just slightly above the water 
um, it seems to be crossed numerous times by uh, 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 dark shapes that as you kind of move and turn a little bit, you make out as chains wrapped around the top of this. Um, on the far side of this, you can just make out Mira's head uh, kind of moving back and forth, and every time it moves and pauses, there's the sound of what you realize now is probably the chains jingling a little bit and a little bit of frustration in her voice. No, it can't be this close and this far away. I will call out to her and say, Mira, Lucas and I are here to save you, or here to uh, help you. Luther. Luther. What did I say? Lucas. Lucas, yeah. I think we I think we both kind of messed the name up a couple of times. I think I've called him Lucas, and it might have been Lucas in the original notes, but it's Luther now because I have it written down on the, on the page. No, it was Luther. I just keep uh, forgetting. Yeah. Um, from behind you, Luther kind of looking over your shoulder. Mira? Mira? Dear, are you there? Oh, you've come. You're just in time, too. What did I tell you? All about timing. From behind you, you hear the sh uh, the diamond's voice. I'm so I really close. need a silent spell. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, the GM kind of goes, but but I have things to say. Um, <laughs> but monologue. <laughs> but but villainous monologue. I mean, concerned standing by citizen man monologue. Um, Timing for what? Luther kind of pushes through beyond all of you. Uh, you might want to move the uh, map screen on the streaming side. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. Yes. I will also zoom out a little bit. If you can make out the space. Um, on the uh, far side of the room, by the way, Silas, all of you would hear the sound of rushing water, but you can actually see rushing water floating in from what looks like a large gap in the wall over on the left-hand side of this map. Um, so it's actually flooding in from that area. Okay. Um, and Luther kind of pushes on beyond you, but is struggling a bit to move further and kind of up to his, uh, uh, almost his chest, really, in water. Probably I'll, just around I'll try to keep a, I'll try and keep a, uh, a hand on his shoulder to keep him from going head too far. Okay. But she's, she's right there. I've got to help her. Come in. Yes, we have to see what's going on. Make sure the place is safe. I need to yeah. move these chains. Help me. Okay. <laughs> uh, is this difficult terrain in here or regular terrain? Uh, it is difficult terrain again, uh, partially because you can't really see the, the floor below you, but you can kind of feel that while less of the snapped pottery, the ground itself, the, the floor itself seems to have been disrupted, probably from water flowing over it or something like that. How high or how deep is the water? About three feet. Okay. And Silas is going to uh, basically uh, duck down and swim over. Okay. Can I um, make an insight check to the tone of her voice? Is it a distressed or a uh, come closer malicious? <laughs> you certainly can make a roll like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes, please do. Uh, my brain cannot word. Uh, no, that is fine. a 17. I think you got the point across quite nicely. 17. So her voice sounds light. She does not sound like she's in concern or in, in distress. In fact, in some ways, it's the exact opposite. There is the edge, although it is somewhat controlled, probably from distraction maybe of the concern she has for what she's, what she's doing. There's almost a sense of jubilation or possibly ecstasy in the edge of her voice. Only very slightly there, but you're used to hearing people in a lot of different states. Uh, you're, you would get, it, get the impression almost like when someone has come before court for an honor, uh, and they have that sort of trying to hold it together, but at the same time, super excited kind of edge of their voice. Be careful. I'll after silence. 
yeah, yeah. You see, Silas moves really fast through the water, uh, mm -hmm. just dipping under and streaking across and popping up right there because that's as far as he can go. Okay, Luther's kind of making his way slowly across the room, but having difficulty kind of stepping. Um, as you get closer, Do these pillars seem solid. Like, the are pillars... are they actually touching the ceiling, or are they crumbling? They are touching the ceiling. They do seem to be solid. As you take a closer look at one of them and kind of pass vice closer, you see that on the surface of all four sides, there appears to be a, uh, a carving of what looks like, uh, well, you'd probably describe it as a knight, um, kind of an old-fashioned style armor, um, slightly stylized. It looks like there's uh, shapes of, of uh, uh, upswung uh, waves almost on the pauldrons. Uh, and on the, the breastplate as well, there seems to be this crashing wave kind of curve there as well. Not terribly detailed, but just sort of carved into the surface. Cool. I will kind of not... Yeah, I'll hide behind it. <laughs> okay. Seventeen uh, is... Uh, 17 plus 6, so that would be 16, 26? 20, uh, 17 plus 6 would be 23. 23, yes. Brain. Sorry, my brain was thinking of 8, not 7. Yep, and you probably uh, stow vice at least a little bit. You, you can still have your hand on it. It's still a ready weapon, but the light of it would give you away. Oh, you're muted, I think? Yep. Just kind of stick it back in, into its sheath, but keep it in hand. Yep. Is uh, Diamond following us in? Yep, and going to be standing kind of in the doorway at this moment. Just kind of arms crossed, wading through. More observing than anything else, you might say. What are you doing? I'm Pedro? observing too, but um, I'll, I'll tell him or her or him using her body. It's like, you know, I healed your follower, so she'd be useful. I'll just sass I, back it. <laughs> I appreciate your gesture. It's another sign that we can simply work together if you're given enough patience. All right. And you're staying back there kind of observing as well? Yeah. Well, I, I, I already used all my movement because I was like farther inside the door. Okay. We're not in strict round by round at this particular moment. Okay. Um, then I'll move more. <laughs> <laughs> Silas, you see as uh, Mira's making her way around and tugging at each of these chains. I need to set it free. I'm not strong enough right now to do this. Please, Harbinger, can you do this? When she looks at Silas. Uh, I'm studying Mira, and uh, I will go over uh, next to her and put our, a hand on her shoulder and say, and just look and say, what are you looking for, Mira? What is here? Let me know so I can help you. Okay. And she looks up at you with widened Wide. eyes, eyes Wide. that almost seem to be unnaturally brightly open. They seem to be focused somewhere else, not entirely straight at you. And when she blinks just for a second, it seems as though the iris is shift from round and wide to thin slits, and then back again. This is the moment. This is the place. Things will change here. But I need to open this. We need to make sure that it's freed before all is lost, before the water tries to claim it all back. Free what? Can I make an insight check? Certainly can. Thank you. Do you want me to roll for it or just... Uh... <laughs> yes, please roll. Uh, sadly, my insight's not great, but let's see what happens. Eh, 15. That's not terrible. Um, Mira is a hard worker. Mira is a straightforward person. Mira and Luther... Uh, Mira sings when Luther plays. Uh, she's usually pretty lighthearted. Um... But she's also one of these people that utterly believes. She has rarely questioned anything the cult has done. 
she's looked at you with a little bit of of wonder sometimes, but mostly with um, admiration. Now, though, there's something different. It is a jubilation. It is a an exaltation. And she called you Harbinger. She's never used that word before. So does she appear to be in control of herself? Seems to be. Okay. Well, I'm going to look at the chains. Okay. Um, you take a look at the chains. She kind of calls over the box to, uh, to Medric. Um, we need to take these chains off to release what's inside. Only then can we move forward. Only then can we have what we need and begin the true work. What's inside? I look at both Mira and then back to Diamond. The Diamond's just sort of smiling, looking amused, uh, leaning up against the wall, arms crossed, content to watch for the moment. Like, I'll just shoot him a dirty look and turn back to Mira. (laughs) (laughs) Um... (laughs) The chains are... Sorry? Just like a bit of a increased flame effect in my eyes as I turn away. It's like, uh, <laughs> sure, sure. A little bit of after after light that kind of trails behind your eyes. Um, the chains are uh, only about uh, an inch wide per link. Um, they're made of what looks like, ru- uh, well, now is rusting metal. As you kind of look and dip underneath the water, you can see that there's actually only a couple of chains. Mostly just loop back and forth. There does appear to be a, uh, a lock at one side, which is binding most of the chains together. So did you chain yourself to this altar? No, the chains are here. I am free. Mira, what is in here? Something we need. Something which will change, and in changing, change everything. But what is it? A tool. Does it serve the other? It will. Uh, Whatever it is, um, our most likely not friend over there is also after it. And just kind of look over the the diamond, just sort of waves nonchalant. Mm-hmm. Silas is just going to focus on the the locks. Okay. Uh, or the lock. Sorry. It's heavy. It's um, looks like it was once maybe gilded, but most of that has rubbed off as it seems to have been rusted. Um, but it's it's thick and strong. And holding fast. You have to be underwater to really see it, but that obviously isn't a problem mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, Silas stays underwater significantly longer than most people would. Um, hmm. Is there anything on the ceiling by any chance that would give us clues as to what's inside? The ceiling seems pretty nondescript. Okay, pretty so no like carvings on, on it. No, there's there's basic buttresses that kind of go between the the pillars, but they're actually remarkably simply curved or simply carved rather than the rest of the space. Hmm. Salas is going to enchant his staff and just do a, a a smack at the lock. Okay, it will be with disadvantage because you're trying to to strike at it underwater. Thirteen. Okay, it's still enough to hit it. It's a non-moving object, but um, you kind of hear, there's this clang which happens when the staff kind of hits the uh, the lock itself. It looks as though it dented the lock, didn't break it, but there's a bit of resonance that happens all around the room, and the chains themselves seem to to resonate from the hit. Kind of reverberates back and forth across the room. There's a little flash from the light around the edge of the center of this box. The box itself, I should say, is nearly 10 feet long, about 5 feet wide. 
well, nothing disastrous seemed to happen, so he's going to do it again. And he'll keep doing it until someone gives him a reason to stop. Or helps. Medrick, what are you doing? Well, so for her to for her to like be able to escape, we have we actually we absolutely have to break that lock. Who are you asking? Just by looking at it. She's not bound to anything. It's not it's not a chain to her, it's chained to the box. Oh okay. Gotcha. Oh I had to understand that it was chained to her. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I, sorry if I it's wrapped around okay. the box. It's wrapped around the box. <laughs> And loop through several loops, which are grounded, uh, on uh, tied into spots in the ground as well. Another bang, another resonance, another flash from the center. <clears throat> um. I don't trust this situation at yeah, all. Yeah, me neither. Until somebody tells me what's in there, I'm not helping. <laughs> okay. Um. The diamond moves from their position by the door just to kind of saunter over to the other side of the room. Given Silas's cult upbringing, this seems perfectly rational. <laughs> I may or may not have been betting on that. <laughs> Actually, from where you are, you can see a little bit more into the far wall, but it's just water pouring out of that area. Yeah. Silas likes the water. Uh, Luther's kind of going to go over, and I keep clicking on the wrong window. It's like I can't change the video window. What's going on here? There. So Luther's kind of moving over to the other side of Mira and grabbing onto her shoulders. And she looks over at him lovingly. It's goes so nice to see you, dear. I'm so glad you could be here for this. My dreams are coming true. How did your dreams end? With the love of the mother. She smiles when she says it. So this pops up out of the water for a second and says, Sounds good to me. Then goes back to wanging on the lock. Okay. Third strike. Uh, is that with... Oh, that is the staff empowered. Okay. I wanted to make sure you had the, the proper... Eight. <laughs> wow, you're doing exactly the same amount of damage each time. That's just creepy. Yeah, but I missed six, that six, time. Six. Unless an eight hits. Oh, yeah. No, an eight does not hit, unfortunately. You kind of strike downward, and you're trying to hit the same spot, but the lock is shifted ever so slightly, and the uh, staff goes gliding across the side of it. Does the fact that he rolled six, six, six... Like, <laughs> if, if he had heard, if he'd hit the third time, that would have been fun. <laughs> but he unfortunately missed. Hmm. Mira kind of uh, embraces Luther and, and he's kind of holding on to her Luther Luther Glass is not from within the clan but he's been married to Mira for quite a while and he's kind of accepted this sort of thing but you can see now uh, Silas as you pop up a little bit and Medrick certainly as you're kind of watching the two of them there are definitely moments of doubt creeping into his, his face uh, he's kind of wondering what exactly is going on and not the 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 family would have told him many things but you get a feeling not being an original born marsh he may not know everything I'm gonna strike it again nobody has said what is in this yet right no, no. well actually Mira has say, stated numerous things but not a lot of detail she said it's a tool that's a 12 and a 7. Yeah, unfortunately, it's 667, the neighbor of the beast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But with the third strike, the rusty lock does actually come free. It's still hooked on the chains themselves. It takes only a moment to clear those off if you're going to. <laughs> but the lock itself seems to have snapped open. Are you going to unhook the chains from this? There's a little flash once more as the chain or the lock is unbroken or unbroken rather. Uh, Silas will pause things for a moment, look at Mira and say, Mira, we must do this safely. And he'll look around and say, everyone, I'm not certain what will happen. 
So be prepared for anything. Okay. I stay where I am. <laughs> I'm going next to Diamond, just in case, and uh, holding an action. If he tries to like run for the thing, I'm swinging a hammer. The Diamond kind of leans in a little bit. It is rather exciting, isn't it? It's well, more like time-inducing, but not that <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, then we we can start loosening the chains. Okay. Uh, as you kind of unhook the chains, the light around the center of the box brightens, uh, kind of with each one getting a little bit brighter until finally the room practically glows. The chains start to fall away, unwrapping this. Uh, and then Mira pushes away from Luther. I've got a job to do now, honey. Relax. This will only take a few minutes. And she kind of bows her head, crosses her hands uh, across her, her stomach and her chest, and kind of nods downward. And Luther takes a step back from where he's standing, just kind of a bit of surprise. As Silas, you see, is getting, as, as Silas is going to be getting ready to stop her if it looks like it's really dangerous. Okay. I'll let She's you decide of the clan, what, so. I'll, I'll let you decide what dangerous is. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> But standing right beside her, Silas, you can kind of feel this this sense, this surge of power. Uh, and shadow starts to creep around the, her back. And then the shadow takes form, solid limbs of water. Uh, one might say almost like tentacles that move up from her shoulders and start to embrace and reach over. And the rest of you can see now this Silhouetted by the, the uh, glowing blue light around this box, there are numerous tentacles now rising, kind of looking semi-translucent, like they're made of water themselves, kind of moving down. Her head is st still bowed, but they seem to be moving over like fingers, probing over the top of the box. Okay, so they're coming out of the box and touching her? They're coming out of her back. Okay. And reaching over to the box, stretching and extending, floating over... Um, Silas, again, from where you're standing, you can see them kind of reaching around, not entirely dissimilar the way that the door locks worked, where there were a lot of different crevices and places where you had to kind of invisibly or unseen put your hand in to activate a switch or a lever or press. Uh, they now seem to be moving across the top of the box. Um, one of them seems to find purpose, and there is a, a, a loud ka -chunk. In, into the box. The whole top of it seems to shudder a little bit and the light flashes outward. Um, let's see. Somebody roll me a D8, please. Somebody or everybody? Just need one. One. It's a one. Perfect. <laughs> Get my sheet out here. Rocks fall, everybody dies. <laughs> Only one rock falls. <laughs> well, in a certain sense, yes. As uh, you hear from behind you a... Uh, let's see if I can get this properly. What's going on here? What have I done? One moment, please. I need to figure out what I'm... Uh, I had the wrong button. There it is. From behind you, as the as the flash of light moves outward from the center of the box um, and uh, collides with the pillars around you, each of them begin to glow ever so slightly. The one just behind you, Silas, started to make sound and crumble as from out of the stone steps forward a, a, uh, a, a humanoid-shaped warrior, clad of stone, steps forward... And how about we roll initiative? Just one second as I put the initiative counter up there. Well, I'm glad you rolled a one. <laughs> uh, let's see. For a moment there, I had a panic as I was like, did I actually create the sheet for these? I was thinking about creating the sheet for these. Did I actually? Oh, good. There it is. Okay. Yeah, I've done that before. Did actually fire. 
I come to you once again, rolling single digits for initiative. <laughs> um, uh, but that's a 17. Yeah. <laughs> one, one second. <laughs> I rolled I, a nine. I had it's almost double thing, digits. But it did not. Okay. Uh, Annie. Annie, Annie, Annie. So your total was what? Nine? 17. Oh, well, then I'm not going to worry too much about you. Uh, let's see. I need to add. I just find it funny that I keep rolling single digits for, for my initiative. And yet you still got a 17. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> I need to roll low at two. <laughs> there we go. Silas, Medrick, Annie, Bandit, Luther, Mira. I don't have. There it is. Uh, let's see if that'll work. Hey, it did work. All right. Uh, you rolled so badly, which means you go first, Annie. Mm -hmm. As you also can hear the sound of, of collapse of stone and heavy footfalls stepping outward somewhere across the other side of the room. It's kind of impossible to see at this moment, but it sounds bad. I'm going to stay hidden and I am going to hold an, an attack with vice. Uh, if I see something that comes within range of me for okay. melee attack. As the blue light had spread across the room briefly, the, it lit up the column beside you, but it's now gone dark, just so you know. Uh, let's see. Yep, that's why I'm holding the action. I'm holding my it, it vice in its sheath and waiting to attack. Absolutely makes sense. Uh, let's see. Uh, next up is the bandit. Uh, Medrick, you see the the uh, diamond move just beside the other side of that column. Mm -hmm. And vanish from sight. I thought I hit the right button. Doggone it. Technology. Oh, wait, I did the right button. I'm not used to the way this works. Okay. Good to go. Uh, that's their turn. Silas, you see this this knight-looking statue thing kind of clomping, turning in your direction. Uh, well, Silas is going to recharge his staff with the bonus action, tell Luther to stay away from it, it's probably dangerous. Uh, I think move to there, and uh, he'll attack it if it gets within five feet of him. Okay, so you're holding your action to attack. Yep. Uh, it seems to be wanting to get within five feet of you as it kind of stomps directly over. Um, yeah, I'll take a whack there. All right. Uh, no. Unfortunately, yeah. the the staff skitters off of its uh, stone surface. Yep. And it's going to return the favor um, with. Uh, I think it's just going to uh, try to uh, to to uh, bash at you. So I back cool. your fist. Hey, shield gets in the way. There you go. And then the other fist, shield gets in the way again. So it batters away at your shield. Uh, you actually can Clank. feel kind of kind of uh, uh, the strength behind it. Um, 
not as heavy as you might have expected for something made apparently of stolid stone. Mm. Uh, Could use some help over here. Mirror uh, uh, kind of calls out over her shoulder. It's working. Soon. Someone roll me a d8, please. Oh, fuck. Uh -oh. That's another one of the tentacles reaches over across the, the edge of it. And you can hear uh, once again oh, the see. dull dull thud from within. Uh, and we will go to that. And uh, Annie, in front of you, there's another flash of blue light that spreads out across the room. And the pillar in front of you, not the one you're beside, but the one in front of you, erupts with, once again, another one of these uh, creatures uh, crawling out the facade you'd seen before stepping out of the stone the pillar behind it does collapse and this time you also notice that the room itself seems to shake a little bit some stone falls from the ceiling oh these are not just um, decorative pillars they probably actually hold the room up that's Mira's turn Luther looks at the thing beside you and looks at Mira and steps closer to Mira, putting her, his hands on her shoulders. I'm here for you. I'm here for all of it. Sounds resolved. He does have that uh, dagger you handed him before, kind of ready, but he's not seeming to attack anything at the moment where he is. Medric. You hear, heard oh. both the one you can see. Actually, you can't quite see. I don't think the other one in front of you but you can hear off to your right a second crashing of stone. I do have dark vision, though. Oh, right, okay. Then you probably can see both of them. Yes, you can see both of them. Right, as for my action... Yeah, I'll dash over here and... Spiritual weapon. Remember, as it is difficult terrain in this room as well because the water is so deep. Yeah, I, d I used the dash. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. And oh, yeah. spiritual weapon as a bonus action. All right. Right next to me. Spiritual weapon. Right about there. Yep. Let me just make sure you have control over that. You should now have control over the spiritual weapon. Thank you. And I believe it can attack when it arrives, too, right? Yep. Right. It's plus proficiency bonus or modifier, I forget. It's your spell. It's your spell attack roll, which I also forget. I have it written down. Uh, for you, okay. wisdom plus proficiency. All right, it's five. I look this up every week, and I always forget every week. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, twenty-one. That is most definitely a hit. Ooh. As the spiritual weapon flames in a circle, comes colliding with the uh, the thing. Everyone. And oh. <laughs> And the stone, or the fire glances across the the oddly shaped stone of its pauldrons, um, but does collide and does seem to do some damage, knocking a bit of stone away from it. You get the impression that it's not really layers of things. It's not like it's a creature wearing armor or what's whatever. It's all solid stones, which just sort of knocks a piece off. Um, that was your move bonus and action. Yeah. Or actually move action bonus, but all three. Annie. Um You were hiding behind the pillar, but that pillar is beside you. <laughs> you may or may not be hiding effectively from the thing in front of you. Yep. Uh I am going to move up and attack it. 
sliding through the water and kapow kapow uh that is a dirty 20. that's a hit definitely um stab forward with vice it glows snicker snack eight damage. all right and carves a pretty good chunk uh -huh. out of it it feels weird and when I, you uh, stab we into it. Get out of here. <laughs> okay. You, when you stab into it, you kind of stab inward. And rather than kind of stabbing like flesh, the blade kind of follows the curve of the uh, the carving on the outside. And when you pull the blade back, it sort of snaps off a piece that falls to the ground. And you yell out, let's get out of here. The, the, the roof is going to collapse. Um... Did this door close? Yes, because no one was holding it. Okay. Uh, so I will use my bonus action to disengage. Okay. And... Um, I should be able to get here. Uh, remember, it is still difficult terrain in this room, though. Uh, okay, then I can get there. Okay, you back up a bit. Yeah, that would be great. Total. Cool. All right. Uh, around already. Wow, look at that. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Okay. Silas, you're up. Do we see her at all? That banded? It you shouldn't. <laughs> Are you seeing it? Uh, yes. On the one here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah some if she's not invisible, then we yeah. still see her with dark vision. But yeah. no, she actually is invisible. There we go. Okay. I think what happens is every time I select her, she moves back to the other, <laughs> the other layer. Um, Silas. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I am going to... Yeah, another defensive action, not really. I know. Um, I am... Uh, oh, no, I don't have any on me. I haven't picked up any. Never mind. Uh, I just uh, used my action to uh, to go defensive. Okay. I uh, don't really have anything for move or bonus, so that's it for now. All right. Let me make sure this is actually there. Finally, it's actually gone. It shouldn't be there. Uh, okay, you go defensive. You're ready to defend yourself, which is good because the ancestral garden guardian or whatever this is called. I, I got names in three places here. That's the character sheet name. Uh, decides to uh, swing out at you and swing out at uh, Medric, who's standing there. So first of all, at uh, disadvantage against um, Silas. Twelve. Hey. Once again, kind of you're you're moving back and forth, and it seems a little slow at grabbing at you uh, towards a backhand to uh, Medric. A ten probably doesn't hit. Nope. Bounces off the fiery shield. Uh, that's its. Uh, oh yeah, the other one. Uh, let's see. Um, they're not that smart. Eh, no, it's gonna go after uh, the center. It's about there as it starts moving over towards the center to stone. Uh, Mira, um, now kind of, of of laughing almost eerily cheerily, if that you know, wasn't intended to rhyme, but it did, uh, as a third tentacle locks in place. Another ka-chunk. The flash goes outward. Someone please roll me a d8. Okay. Annie. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> From beside you, 
The flash covers over the room, and that pillar lights up. And stepping out of it is another one of these these creatures, these guardians. One dance, one dance. Just kind of steps out. Does she get an attack of opportunity? <laughs> um. Yeah, sure. If you want. Cool, cool. You know what these uh, things are, or at least you've seen it happen. You you kind of know what's coming next, so you can dash or dive in and stab as it tries to step out. Yeah, uh, I will. I will take that then. Oh, uh, that's a natural eighteen. Nice. That is a hit. Uh, so five damage. Okay. As once again, you kind of sneak in with with uh, with vice, and instead of finding flesh you can move through in the in, underneath, you kind of find that edge to pry up some of the stone and break off part of the statue. Um, that's their turn. Luther, <laughs> Luther looks very uncertain about the position he's in, but with one hand still held on onto uh, her back, and he kind of looks over and notices that the strange watery tentacles that are coming out of her back. Kind of wrapping around one of his arms, the one arm that's holding on to his shoulder or, or her, her shoulder, uh, and kind of looking over at Silas with some desperation, although Silas is not really paying attention to him, and holding out the dagger uh, in the direction uh, of actually of the other one, which is coming in uh, and kind of getting ready. Medric. All right, well, uh, is my shield still on fire? Like, has it been 10 minutes? Uh, no, it hasn't been 10 minutes since the other fight. Okay. Cool. So, I will swing at the guy in front of me. So, bonus action to use the shield? Yeah. Okay. You can use the shield yeah, or you can back. use the the uh, weapon, remember? What yeah, you can't use both. Since they both uh, require a bonus action to activate, you can use one or the other. Okay, I won't use the shield right now, then. Okay. So I will swing with the hammer. Uh, 14? 14 is a miss. It glances off the, the, uh, the heavy stone. Spiritual weapon. That's a hit. That's definitely a hit. As it kind of does that wind up of whack. Clang. It's more of thud because it's stone, but... All right, Four. So large better chunk. than one. It's definitely better than one. Another large chunk falls off of its side. Uh, that was uh, bonus and action. Would you? Do you want to do a uh, move at all? Nope. Okay. Annie. This thing kind of walked away from you, not really even paying attention. Neither did the other one. I'm fine with this. Um... I'm going to take two steps to here. Okay. And I am going to uh, try to get this door open. All right. Sleight of hand with advantage. <laughs> Wouldn't it be thieves tools? Or sorry, thieves tools, right. Yeah. Still advantage because you've opened this kind of lock numerous times. Oh yeah, uh, that is uh, twenty-five. Yep, no problem whatsoever. Um, you find yeah. the, the the fingering on the door and kind of uh, uh, find the right appropriate places, and it's open easily, unlocked. Um, and I was just engaging the Um, yeah, I am going to. Um, how far? Uh, give, uh, yeah, nothing's really going to be within range of me anyway. Uh, yeah, that's it. Door is open and I once again yell, this room is going to fall. We need to go. And just to indicate here, I'm going to put little spots over the pillars, which are actually gone now. Uh, 
All right. Um, and, was that and I'm standing help? in the doorway. Was that a help action or just a please, please, desperate, please, <laughs> let's not stay here while please, the roof please, falls. Please, everybody's too far for me to. Okay. Fair enough. You can do. You can hide. You have a bonus action still, right? Yeah, I'll try to hide in this doorway. Okay. Not twenty. You are a door. You found that that little spot where there's not much light being uh, given out by the center of the room, just enough shadow to hide in. Total twenty-six. Holy crap! Okay, that is quite enough. That is quite enough. From behind the creature, the bandit appears once more. Um, this time, the uh, blade that they were carrying has an extension of shadow. Uh, it will be a from the darkness strike in this case. Um, yeah, it's an. Make sure I get the right layer. Um, as yes, the the blade kind of carves, and and what you notice from the front, Medric, and from uh, from uh, Silas is the the shadowy extension of the blade passes right through the creature. It is not blocked by the stone whatsoever. Um, and yeah, that's a pretty significant strike. Bang! And there's a little bit of of glee from the other side. I told you we could work together. As it strikes again. Uh, and cuts it down in two strikes. Uh, so the stone collapses at your feet, and it stands there looking so satisfied. Nice. Then uh, vanishes. That's nice. Kind of like the um, like the Cheshire Cat. The last thing you see are the twin uh, lights of the diamond eyes as it vanishes into the darkness once more. Silas. Well, Silas reaches out to touch both Luther and Mira and casts invisibility on them as they pass from sight. Ooh. They will stay invisible until they make an attack or cast a spell. Or an hour passes, something like that. That's one of my two spell slots gone. Uh, what I will do is I will just mark them as invisible. I think that's the one I'm looking for. No eyes. Technically, that's blinding. <laughs> There's probably a better one for that. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you can make that out at all. I don't know if anybody at home can also make that out. There's like a green drop. Yeah, it's it's technically a little black shadow. Yeah, it'll work. I'll forget it's there. <laughs> uh, but yes, they are. They become invisible, and it, the the tentacles themselves that were extended out of Mira's back also seem to become invisible. Oh, good. Uh, um, that was your action. Yeah. Um, are there any small pieces knocked off that stone guy that fell it's, in the water? It's basically rubble at this point. It kind of discombobulated when it was struck down. I'm just wondering, for the purposes of enchanted stone, uh, yes, sir. are there a few pieces I could grab? Easily so. Okay, I will grab three and use a bonus action to charge them up. Okay. Um, they glow slightly in your hands. And then I guess walk over here just to provide them some extra cover. And that's it. Okay. 
uh, well, the one of them that's right in front of you is going to stomp on towards you and make an attempt mm -hmm. to make you one with the ground. Uh, 11 doesn't hit, I'm assuming? Nope. Uh, oof. 24, Ooh. Will. And that's yeah. a critical. Yeah, that's a lot. Yes. Uh, as there is the burst of light when it hits as well. So that's 16. Uh, yes, indeed. I got three hit points left. As the first <laughs> miss leads to an uppercut, which takes you off your feet for a second and then splashes you down into the ground, into the water. Let's see what the other one does. How smart is it? Eh, not smart enough to know that's going on. It's going to trundle on over to there. Uh, yes, that's as far as it can get. Mira, no longer seen, but can be heard somewhere. So close. Not far now. And there's that familiar sound of the kachunk, as once again something seems to have been released. The flash of blue across the room. Someone roll me a d8, please. Yay, they're all up in my corner. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, as nearby uh, another one erupts from the stone. Not too far hey, away. It's, it's one of the ones that aren't right beside me. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very, very good point. Um, then we'll try to fill in a little square. And once again, chunks of stone start to fall down from the ceiling. As you can see, the buttresses now, which had been pressured by these by these pillars in place, start to sag and large chunks fall out from the center um, somewhere in this area. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I drew on the map. I didn't mean to draw on the map. Oh, geez. I just removed the map. <laughs> Control Z. Control Z. <laughs> uh, yeah, moved it back. Yeah. Right, gotta go to the right layer. Then I gotta go back to the to the back. There we go. I will not try to delete that anymore, or I will try to select it if I can. Nope. Do we go there? Nope. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, never mind. There's a red spot. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> a large um, pebble that fell from the ceiling is now there. That's true. Um, Luther's staying invisible. Medric, you've seen Mira and Luther vanish uh, after being touched by uh, by Silas. You also hear the sound of another pillar crushing, which probably means, well, actually, you can see from there, it means another one of these things has erupted yeah. another pillar. I'll take my movement towards that way. You can see that uh, 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 Silas looks, looks very bad. Yeah, he does. That, la that last hit, hit uh, buckled him down to his, his knees. He pops back up standing, but kind of wavering a little. Hold on. Don't that... worry, I'm fine. <laughs> My map just went all screwy again because I touched the mouse wheel with like 0 0.1 pounds of pressure. <laughs> pounds? Okay, here we are. So Silas is going to get some HP back. Hey. Level two cure wounds. Hey. hey. Nice. Thank little you. little flare up that surrounds him, making him invigorated once more. Ignis rolls for one, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Your boss doesn't hate you. Yay. <laughs> That's my action and move. Spiritual weapon can go through mirror, right? Two, three, four, and be here. Yep, you can fly overhead. All right, it um, will. I'm going take a to swing. be nice and say you 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 realize you probably need to put it high enough that mirror is probably still there, so you don't just you know wash through her area. Yeah. Swing. Oh. Ooh, yeah. No, unfortunately, it swings down and. Uh, Maybe because it looked away at just the right time, it completely misses. Crap, okay. 
Um, that was your move. That was your bonus. And that was your action. Annie. Yeah. They don't seem to be heeding your warning. <laughs> well, if Silas wasn't like near dead, I would have. <laughs> Uh, Silas is just protecting the mirror. Yep. And I don't want to end up in the bottom of a heap of rubble either. Um. What do I have? Um. I'm going to pull out one of the daggers that I grabbed from one of the bodies. Okay. Actually, no. I'm going to put vice in my teeth and grab my short bow. Aha, okay. And then you line like vice up on the short bow and fired across the room. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh. I was like looking at my equipment. I'm like, I have a short bow somewhere. I think. <laughs> uh, Is this a short bow? That's no. A, no, that's a sandwich. What the hell? Uh, a twenty-one. To twenty-one hit. is a hit. Which one are you firing at? Uh, the one closest to me. Okay. Or. No, the one beside Silas. Okay. Because uh, I can see Silas. Okay, so that is one, two, three, four, nine, twelve damage. Ooh, nice. Is that with sneak attack? That is with sneak attack for because Silas is there. Yep. No, I just wanted to make sure that was included. That's a pretty solid hit. Uh, nice. The arrow goes flying yeah, on through. Uh, two ones and a two. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a very solid hit. Then, right. with that. Uh, as an arrow flies through, this time kind of embedding itself in one of the shelves of the uh, the clothing it's wearing. And, and again, chunks kind of come off, but now it has an arrow kind of stuck into the side of what would be its neck. Oh, uh, I'm just going to roll. Uh, that is not a natural 20. Because I was hidden. Okay. Mm. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna see. No. Uh, ah, there we go. Yeah, he's not gonna be in melee if he moves. So, or within thirty feet if he moves. So yeah, I'll try to hide again. Uh, that is a natural 19 for a 25. Once again, you're the most natural doorstop. <laughs> yes. I am but a rock. But a rock. You are a door. You are a jar. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Hmm. I'm making sure y'all at least don't have to deal with unlocking the door. Yeah. Uh, the roof starts to actually cave in. <laughs> so. And hopefully being in the door frame helps me not get stuck in the cave in. This is solid, prudent earthquake information. Um, Silas. Yes. Actually, first, um, I will have uh, Medric make a perception check at disadvantage. Shoot. Well, that's not very good. Uh, no, it is not. Never mind. Uh, Silas. Uh, I need to make a constitution check for the spell because i took damage oh yes uh however half of 13 is only six so i just need a 10 plus there we go Ooh. nope 
So they're not invisible anymore. Okay, no longer invisible. Oh well. It definitely helped them though, because. Uh. Yeah. Well, I don't really have much else I can do at the moment. Uh. And defensively. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could do that, or I could attack. Granted, my attacks are kind of crap. So, yeah, I will stand defensively, uh, trying to get it from, uh, keep it from getting to the others. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think that's all I've got because I don't have much for bonus actions. All right. It uh, doesn't seem as interested in you. It seems as more interested in Medric because Medric was pounding away at it just a moment ago. So we'll attempt to pound away at Medric. Look at that. Uh, one swing with one fist. 13? I don't think yep. that hits. And then the other one is sort of a backhanding motion. 7. Yeah, these aren't really all that great to hit. The other one uh, is actually going to move around. Or try to. Trying to move around the center. And actually, it'll take all of its time to get there. Uh, yeah, it's big and bulky. It can't actually go there. So it stands there, kind of moving around the the uh, the box. The other one moves in towards Medric, but as it steps up to Medric from behind it, invisibly for a moment, and then no longer invisible, is once again the Shadow Blade going snicker snack. Yay. Has advantage, so a 22, it does 13 points of damage. As once again, the blade kind of pierces right directly through it. And you see for a moment the blade kind of pop out its chest right in front of you, Medric. Nonetheless, the thing is still intent on smacking you. A 19, does that hit? Yep. So seven points of bludgeoning damage and a little burst of blue energy. That's two more points of radiant damage, a total of nine. And then once more, this time, glancing off the fire shield. Not seeming to be bothered too much by it. Uh, that's all of them. Mira. Uh, Work faster. It's hard to do this all by myself. I'm only able to understand a few of them. And once again, however, there is another kachunk, and I will need someone to roll a d8 for me, please. Damn it. Aha. The light flashes over the room, and nothing happens. Yay. Ooh, that's good. You're doing fine. You're doing fine, Mira. I believe in you. I believe in the mother. Oh, this looks dangerous. Luther's kind of trying to to uh, to uh, actually eyeing the one that's coming around the other side. We'll try to get in that thing's way. So he's going to move to be right there, but he's being very defensive. Um, Luther was not strong by hero standards before. Uh, he probably wouldn't survive much if he got hit too hard. Medric. The one that got shanked by the Shadow Blade, I'm going to hit him. Okay. 18. 18 hits. Or 8 points. Nice. As you, uh, that's with your Warhammer? Yeah. Okay. As you kind of collide into the side of it, into its chest, a large chunk falls off of its chest. Uh, kind of around the same place where the Shadow Blade itself had pierced through, so maybe it was uh, weakened already. Okay. And the uh, spiritual weapon is going to move a little closer to it and okay. also attack. All right, then. Swoosh. Damn it. That is a miss, unfortunately. As when you hit it in the chest, it kind of backs up a little bit, just as the the flaming warhammer goes sliding over its over its where its head would have been, if only you had not been so successful. Well, maybe not quite, but 
And it's going to shamefully move back for the rest of its movement. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Annie. Another flash, but this time the room did not shake. Is Annie on mute? I don't know. I didn't see her lips move. Yes. Okay. Rain was trying to (laughs) see what was going on. Um... Well, I'm going to stay in my doorway and shoot the one by Medric. Uh, the one by Silas seven. as well, or the try to get beyond it to the one that's right in front of Medric? Because there's two side by each there. Oh, the the weapon. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot this one then. Okay. Sorry, the weapon's on top of it, so I didn't see it there. And that's why I was confused. I was like, aren't there four? <clears throat> There are only three. Twenty-three to hit. Twenty-three is definitely a hit. Apparently, it's a day that I need to like count up to as, not just be able to add. We've all been there. Oh my goodness! My sneak attack sucks. I rolled four total sneak attack again. Wow. Uh, four, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. Okay. Uh, as the arrow kind of lodges deep in and you can kind of see where it kind of hits right beside the other one that was there it still has the other arrow and the other one kind of right right beside it and you can see the head is kind of teetering close to falling off but not off the weapon Mm, that's the one that's underneath the weapon and I'm gonna there's nothing there's, there's nothing underneath any weapons here there's only, the there's only three that right are out. Here. There's nothing underneath mm-hmm. the spiritual weapon. There's only three that are active. Yeah, there's one yeah, next to the one right here. On my screen. What? So what? It, it's this one right here that I'm attacking. The oh, one weird. Okay. To me. No, the, the spiritual weapon yeah. is over here on everybody else's screen. Okay. For me, it was, it, it was on weird. that one. Funky. That's why I was confused. Yeah, okay. no, that's weird. Yes, the the one to the right of Silas is the one that I hit. Fair. Uh, and... Twenty three to hide. Twenty three to hide. Okay. You are once again nothing more than a doorstop, a very efficient, yeah. dangerous doorstop. Uh, let's see. It does not have the advantage of being able to see this thing now, or to be hidden from this thing. So he's just going to strike instead as the diamond bandit once again strikes the same one in the back. Oh, that would have been a crit. But it was not. Uh, But it does manage to do... (laughs) It does manage to do 16 points to its 12. Wow. As once again, the bandit kind of stabs it from behind and it collapses into a pile of... uh, rubble in front of you. Uh, And then he's going to move forward. And almost nonchalantly stab at the other one. Uh, And misses. (laughs) He shouldn't have been so nonchalant. As he kind of swings, and because the way the head is kind of lolling back and forth, half cut off, the blade actually cuts right through that area, missing entirely. Uh, and then he goes invisible. He, she, they go invisible. Uh, that makes it Silas's turn. Okay. Well, Silas can't get any closer to it than here, but he's... Uh, yeah, this is a risk, but he'll do it. He's going to move behind Myra. Oh, okay. And he's going to try and help her, but uh, yes, i got to see if it smashes me. Uh, he, he will make an attempt. Let's see how it does. Oof. It does. Yes. As it kind of collides, catches you on the shoulder as you're moving away, causing you to stumble a few feet, and you can feel that shoulder with a nasty bruise welting up. Possibly even more. Uh, then I'll, I'll put my hands on her back okay. uh, and try to help her. Like, I'll look at what she's doing and uh, 
I don't know. Try to assist. Okay. You I'm can not do. entirely sure what she's doing myself. But... Make an arcana roll. No, cheat. Okay. Hey, there, is a, there is a pattern to where the tentacles have gone out to try to grasp different, different places. At first, they almost seem to be blindly groping across the surface, but now you figure out the pattern and then point out, there, that one should be next. Hey. I knew you would come through for me, Harbinger. I knew. Now... My job to serve. This one over by uh, by Medric is going to give a yeah. It's 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 still intent on Medric at the moment, even though space is opened up. Um, so we'll try to smash away at Medric. A twenty hits. Yep. Not natural, so just normal. Uh, eleven points of radiant damage, or eleven points total damage, however. And then one more time. 14? That doesn't hit, I don't think. No. Uh, as uh, it kind of bashes away and kind of you put the shield up, it smashes into the shield the first time, knocks you down a little bit. You get back up and angle the shield just the right way that the second hit bounces off of it. Uh, the other one, however, is going to take a swing at... Um, actually, wait, does it even feel... I don't think it even cares. It steps right in, kind of not paying attention to... Uh, actually, no, I'll just try to shove Luther aside. That's what it will do. It doesn't even see him as a threat. Yeah. He just sort of shoves Luther to the side, steps in. And, Bye, Luther. Uh, <laughs> reaches towards, uh, towards Mira. That's its... Uh, no, it still can make one more attack, actually, against her. Um, that is a hit... And despite the solidity of the of the attack, you're a bit surprised, um, Silas, in that the watery tentacles kind of take it. One of them vanishes. Mm. Okay. And she grits her teeth. There, you're sure? All right. And directs the, the uh, remaining tentacle in that direction. It reaches inward, and once again there is that resounding click, a bright flash of blue light, and then a second thunk from within, An, a brighter flash of blue light that, that sustains and grows throughout the room. It grows in an ever-expanding circle as it touches each of these large stone statues. They collapse into rubble. The light continues and floods the room. You can now consider this to be fully lit room from this one central point. Above each of the statues, there seems to be the emergence of a humanoid-shaped blue translucent being. Robed, their heads cowled over, um, standing almost at, at penitence, and then they vanish. The tentacles all give a push, and the top of this box falls off onto the ground, revealing within a humanoid form, this time wrapped up in funeral bandages. Beside the form is a fairly long, thin, slightly crooked crystal staff. I found it. She quickly reaches in and grabs the staff. With the, her arm, all of the other tentacle arms wrap around this staff as well. Uh, that's it for the moment. Is anybody interceding in any way? Uh, I'm grabbing onto the staff as well. But uh, and other than that, I'm just looking in the sarcophagus or whatever it is. Okay. The body itself seems to be giving off the blue glow. It's surrounded by water. The water is pure. It looks not unlike the pure water of the deep sea somehow. 
giving off that that slightly uh, uh, cyan glow. As you grab a hold of the staff, you can feel thrumming through it energy. And from where her hand and the other tentacles are, spreads a a a, a, a dark solid color inside the the, uh, the crystal, almost as though the crystal was nothing more than glass and hollow and water inside. And it begins to solidify. Um, she reaches her other hand back into a, a bag at her, her uh, hip and pulls out the small uh, bundle of of uh, of uh, sea fronds, essentially, with a, a wrapped up uh, uh, looks like a crab within. Tilts the uh, the the staff towards her, which is now fully engorged in this this inner uh, depth, and you can see from where you are that it's not it's not brown or black; it's blue. It's like the deep blue now of the sea, far far below. Something you've dreamed of but never quite seen, but close when you came to be underwater in the Sea Devil's Cave. And she wraps the fronds around the end. The claw seems to hook onto the end and the whole thing solidifies. The blue light from within the box fades as do the shades that were standing above those other stone uh, stone statues. She lets go and now you find yourself holding a staff which thrums with familiar warmth and power. <coughs> I've done Meyer, it. Meyer, who was this? They were what once. Is this? They were once a wielder of great power, but that power has gone from the land, leaving nothing more than empty shells. I've done it. I've done it. I present to you. I present it to you, Silas. The staff of it's the harbinger. All for you. Uh, the staff of the harbinger. And she kneels down in the water, her head almost touching it. From where he's standing, uh, Luther also drops down into the water. Uh, Silas just... Silas looks around and sees that everything has fallen down that's not his allies or the diamond. Doesn't see the diamond, actually. No. Huh. Um... He's around here somewhere, and I'll stand defensively. Uh, Myra, uh, thank you. Uh, and then he'll uh, he'll take kind of a ceremonial position, sort of holding the staff horizontally in front of them. Although instead of it being on his hands, he's got a grip on it because he doesn't trust the diamonds not going to grab stuff. Or you know, stab one of us from the darkness. Yeah. Um, if we're done, we should go. This place isn't stable. And he's right. Silas momentarily just flinches slightly and uh, and as a, the mother has blessed us all. Thank you, Myra. Uh, Luther. Uh, yes, we should go. Myra stands uh, up and kind of looking her face, a broad, bright smile, looking beatif uh, beatific. Uh, I want uh, uh, Silas uh, and Medrick. Actually, all three of you, make a perception check, please. Uh, Annie, you're at disadvantage. That's a five. Also wow. a five. I got a two. You, you guys are right in the moment, and that's all you notice. Yep. Uh, I rolled a four and a five, so total five. <laughs> did notice, so he goes first. Uh, as the shadow somewhat spaced out from you. I'll actually put them on the map so you can see them. As the uh, the diamond bandit <clears throat> appears on the far side of the of the uh, uh, the altar, the, the, the sarcophagus, and stabs forward into something you cannot see. Uh, oh, wow. That's actually a really good hit. And stabs a second time. 
missing the second time. Uh, but that first time was nice. Stabs into something you cannot see, which becomes visible. It is enormous. It resembles not entirely, uh, or resembles a bit like a gigantic version of the smaller creatures you'd seen before. It appears on the far side of this uh, altar, hovering over it by a few feet. Wincing a bit from the stabbing it received in the back, it lurches forward, opens its gigantic mouth. And let's see what happens. Where is that sheet? If it's diving for Myra, I want to jump in its way. <coughs> oh, it's the hammer. For anyone else. You, you didn't see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. I thought we were seeing it now. Uh, you are seeing it just now as it basically is taking its its action. But unfortunately, uh, the only one who actually noticed it was there was the, the diamond. No problem. Uh, let's see. As it bites towards her. Um... Ooh, yeah. it missed. It missed. Uh, but it did seem like it was trying to bite towards Mira and grab her. And we will roll initiative once more. In just That's a, a lot of damage. It, it definitely is. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, so we're pretty much like one shot if it hits us. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I need to make it... Shoot, it didn't Shoot go under the rest of the tracker. Alice. And I rolled a one. Oh. Damn it, I didn't have my icon selected. That's uh, okay. I can I can add it here. Well, I would be able to if the menu didn't scroll off the screen. Oh, roll twenty. Yeah, you're there. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, and I think I'm still missing. Or what did Annie get? Yeah, because you roll yours separately. Uh, did I have uh, thirteen? Thirteen. Hey, it's not like a four. It's great. I mean, I rolled a five on the die. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and Mira, where did you draw? Do I have that? Too many windows. Yay, there we go. And yeah, I'm using the bandit sheet for those guys. And OK, they did actually add on. All right. Sorry, what did you get, Annie? I don't see. For some reason, they didn't type it in. 13? Yes. Okay. It wasn't letting me press enter for some reason. <laughs> um, wow, that's a really banded, uh, banded initiative. Uh, it is now its turn uh, because it had its sort of surprise round. And it's once again going to try to eat, is that what you presume, uh, Mira. And it does. As you, as you watch Ow. with, uh, with uh, uh, aghast as it kind of bears down, super extends the top part of its head and chomps down on Mira, uh, pulling her into, with a leathery tongue, pulling her into its maw. Uh, and that's its whole, that's its whole stick for the moment. Medric. Well, the spiritual weapon is going to go hit it. Or does it have to happen after I move? Nope, the spiritual weapon can move on its own. All right, I will move and I will hit it. Hey, yeah. Is 16 a hit? Uh, 16 hits. It takes 10. Nice. And the spiritual weapon hits, or hopefully hits. Ish, probably not. Uh, he gets a nine. nine. Nine does not hit. 
keeping in mind that the the altar is right there, so you'd have to go around the altar to get to it much closer. Although it's big enough and kind of hanging half over the altar at the moment. Okay. Uh, that was Medric's turn. Annie, something huge Whoa. just appeared in the middle of everything and ate Mira. Um, well, how far from me is it? It is 30 feet from me. Perfect. So, um, I think I talked, didn't I? You talked? Yes. Okay. Cool. So I will shoot it with the uh, short bow. Oh, you hit at the end of uh, that, actually. So you do have advantage. Well, I rolled double sixes. So 12. <laughs> 12, unfortunately, does not hit. It kind of bounces off the blubber of this creature. Uh, and I will tell Silas uh, that uh, hitting it in the skull seemed to work good last time for the smaller ones and give him advantage. Okay. Good idea. Uh, let's see. I'll do what I can! <laughs> <laughs> From behind it, um, again, kind of looking pleased, um, you see the diamond bandit who simply says with that doubled voice, there you are. I was wondering where you were coming from. And strikes. Uh, first strike is a miss. Uh, it's just so glisteningly blubberish that it misses. I don't know, I have another thing for that. Second hits though, uh, as once again, this time the, the, the blade pierces, but it has this weird sort of shimmery effect on the other side. Almost as though the, the blade is getting disrupted by the very presence of this thing. That can't be right. Did I just do that? Yes, I did. Shoot. One second, I gotta recalculate something. Always important to put the right numbers on these things. I'm gonna take a guess. Mm -hmm. That is oh, and he becomes they become invisible once more. Uh, that puts it at Luther's turn. Luther screams, <laughs> No! Give me back my wife! And kind of runs over and stabs at it. This might not go well. Uh, oh, shoot, it was the dagger. Never mind. Uh, it doesn't go as well as you'd hoped, but he does hit. So he actually, he actually pierces its hide um, with the, the dagger, but it kind of looks almost as though he's punching into dough like bread dough, and it's kind of comes back out with a tiny little hole. Silas. Uh, I think I have an idea. Just let me... I am uh, shoot. I want to use the advantage that Annie just gave me, but I think <laughs> my best thing is a spell. Uh, okay. A targeted spell? No, sadly. I, I mean, technically, I have to touch it, but it doesn't make an attack roll. It makes a save. Uh, so I'll step forward to where she used to be, and I'm going to touch it and cast uh, Bestow Curse. Ooh, what's that do? Uh, uh, which he calls something different, but uh, yes, he uh, he casts uh, Suffering. What he's going to do is uh, he's going to curse its strength. Uh, where did that go? No. Okay, it has to make a uh, whiz. Oh, actually, it makes a wisdom saving throw against fourteen. 
Okay. Um, on the sheets in D and roll twenty. If you don't have a separate one, is it just the bonus, the stat bonus for the uh, saves? For saves, uh, if it doesn't, if it's not, uh, yeah, if it doesn't have some other bonus being added to it, it's just the stat. Yeah. Okay, so it's just a wisdom roll. Uh, oh, nine. thank God. That is not good enough. Uh, what the? What is the? Okay. The effect is uh, I choose an ability score. In this case, strength. While cursed has disadvantage on ability checks and saving throws made with that ability score. Oh, maybe I'll okay. No, because attacking isn't an ability check. So, actually, I'm going to target wisdom. Okay. Uh, so it has disadvantage on wisdom ability checks and saving throws. <clears throat> it also has disadvantage to attack me. Uh, and while cursed, it has to make a wisdom saving throw at the start of each of its turns. If it fails, it does nothing for the turn. Nice. And my attacks and spells do an extra D8 necrotic damage to it. Nice. Okay. Nice. And since um, it needs to save with wisdom, it's already at a disadvantage, so nicely done. So yes, and then I will bonus action to charge up the, the, the new staff. I've got a staff... Uh, okay, my old staff is leaning against the crypt. Okay. Uh, holding the crystal staff now. And that's it for my turn. Okay. Well, um, swirling around it, kind of over its its head and eyes, is this, this uh, swirling cloud that resembles a nest of snakes. And you can see its eyes darting back and forth trying to see and understand what's going on around it, but seeming to fail. From within. Where are you? There you are. Uh, that with advantage. Oh. Its mouth starts to part slightly, and those same um, watery tentacles start to peep out from its mouth. You get the sense that Myra is trying to climb back out, but was not, not and it started, but has not yet gotten there. Oh, thank goodness she's not dead. Uh, no, and actually you're a bit surprised because that should have destroyed just about anyone. Yeah, um, that would have killed me. From uh, from the creature, oh yes, a wisdom saving throw. So let's see, that's a disadvantage. Well, it's an eight, so it does not do anything. It still stands there, it's a hands kind of reaching, trying to grab at the snakes and seeming to have no effect. Medric, you're up. Uh, and just so we know, its con duration is concentration up to one minute. So if I take damage, I could lose it. Okay. Uh, Medric, you're up. You're muted. Great. I'll walk up to it and swing for the fences with the Warhammer. One-handed. Fuck. I, I guess I hit the air. Uh, and the spiritual weapon will attack also. Okay, it, it, it works. Crits. There you go. <laughs> for a moment, I was worried for you guys. Hey, nice. nice. Uh, and remember to add another die to it because of the critical. Yeah. Right, so 2d8. No. Uh, yeah, just add a d8. Yeah. Do I re-roll that, or do I just roll another D8? Just, just roll one D8. D8. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, and, and not the extra plus two, so yeah. it would be 11. Still, yeah. okay. that is a nice hit. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you're seeing now that its sort of scorched, bloated body uh, is burning. You also note as the, uh, as the, uh, the flaming hammer goes by, these uh, rather gross-looking pustules at about six or eight inches wide that seem to be growing wider every second uh Annie, on the thing on the thing that looks really gross i don't want to be near it can i use my last two pieces of movement <laughs> to walk away you can it, it it was going to try to make an attack uh because you're right there um wait what okay i have to actually add an attack but for some reason i, I missed the basic attack <laughs> Right, uh, but that's it, a. If it failed the wisdom saving throw, though. Uh, that because it loses its action, doesn't lose its reaction. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think. 
Yeah, if it fails, yeah, it just wastes its action that turn. So reactions, it still technically has. All right. Well, let's hope it has bad dexterity. Mm. Uh, it's not a dexterity based attack. I'm going to have to just write that in because it seems reasonable. Let me call it that. Oh, actually, I know how much it is. Shoot, I have a different sheet. Uh, too many sheets. And that one's not open. That does not help me. One moment, please. GM confusion for 1d4 rounds. <laughs> There's a bug in in uh, roll 20. That if I open up a character sheet, nothing appears. If I open up a second one, it appears. <laughs> it's a feature. It's yeah, a, I've had that, that thing happen to me too. Yeah. Uh, okay, that one. So that's this one then. Uh, all right. So it does take a swipe at you as you pass by it. I don't think a 12 hits anyway. Nope. Okay. It does take a kind of blind sw uh, swipe at you, but as I'm able to connect. Uh, so, Annie, you're up. Okay, I'm going to shoot it. Recommended. Natural 20. Oh, Woo! God. Two Dang. in a row. Uh, so double the dice on a sneak attack, which is nice. Yeah, and... this is, this is uh -huh. where, you, where rogues get stupid dangerous. Yeah. So, how do you want to kill it? We'll find out. <laughs> 11. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Uh, all ones good. again, right? For the one, sneak attack damage. Just seven. Like all ones. 30. 30 total? <laughs> so it, it takes 30 damage of its 29. <laughs> what does it look like as the arrow kills it? It's in the eyeball. Shoot it in the eyeball? Okay. It's like uh, turning to like go hit Medric and I shoot it in the eye. Okay. Uh, as yes, the arrow flies true. You've got that little bit of extra curve because uh, it's a it's a little bit higher than you are, so you're kinda like aim, aim careful, breathe in, let go. The arrow goes flying, and you're at the first moment thinking, oh no, it's, it's actually gonna shift and move around. And then it kind of turns, and its eye stares straight in your direction, unseeing as it goes right into the eye, and then right out the other side of its eye. It screams in pain, its mouth going wide, and out of its mouth climbs Mira with the help of the additional uh, tentacle arms. And it fades downward. Medrick, you see as it, as it falls down uh, to the ground. Actually, sorry, Silas will be the one to see because he's that close. As its body sort of seemingly almost seems to deflate and start to melt away, the little uh, large pustules, the six-inch pustules that were growing rapidly, you can see kind of bursting open as tiny little versions of the same creature, probably proto-versions, uh, that would become the little creatures you saw running around before themselves kind of, kind of burst open, lifeless now, and then scream little tiny baby uh, ugly hob screams as the whole thing kind of melts into the water and dissipates into nothingness. Squish uh, those. Silas, yeah, Silas, who is not a uh, a killer and whatnot, kind of screams and starts smashing them. <laughs> okay, they squish satisfyingly underfoot and under under it's, staff. It's all freaked out by that. Um, but soon they they themselves sort of vanish into protoplasm, but then it's itself also probably evaporates into nothing, although one might wonder if it's evaporated into the water itself surrounding you. And from the other side, becoming visible once more, is your friend, the diamond. Uh, as it, uh, as they... Diamond ain't no friend of mine. Clap their hands. Well done. Well done. Actually, uh, Silas would see the mirror. Like, um... He called Medric over. It's like uh, Medric, can you can, can you help her? Yeah, I'll help her up. Um, as you kind of reach over the the watery tentacles that had been sort of surrounding her, kind of slough off, as if they themselves are are dead and lifeless. Um, her eyes carry a certain level of zeal, but you can see she's covered in this sort of is acidic goo. That even as you you touch and try to help her up. Uh, uh, it sort of uh, melts away at your hands. Uh, let's see. Doo, doo, doo. Uh, 
Each of you helping her take five points of necrotic damage from the acidic Jeez, leftover. I have one HP. Stuff. So I'll heal myself once for D6. Silas will try to do what he can with prestidigitation, but yeah, mostly it'll be just sloughing it off with her with his hands. It does fade quickly as the water sort of flows around her, and as the the tentacles themselves, lifeless, um, sort of take a lot of it with her, but. Uh, with with them rather, but yeah, it's a it's a terrible uh, mess. Um, once more, though, um, you hold the staff, and behind you in that box, the light that was surrounding this body fades and dims, and the the bandages themselves start to to uh, to um, shrink and fall downward, as if the the mass that they were that was holding them up is starting to fade. The room starts to shake and large stones fall from the ceiling. All right. Uh, yeah. Silas looks over at the door and says, Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? <laughs> You've been waiting for that one. Yes. <laughs> we should probably leave. Guys, we should get out of here. Run away. Uh, I will make sure that uh, Luther and Myra are going ahead of me. Okay, Luther uh, has his arms uh, kind of propping up Myra, but as they move along, you kind of aren't sure who's propping up whom because Luther does not look great. If anything, Luther looks worse than she does. <coughs> the uh, pillars in the room start to crumble as the 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 uh, the statuesque uh, uh, armors seem to step out of them. And then immediately crumble into dust. Um, the uh, diamond, the diamond bandit is also moving with you. The, uh, Annie's held the door open, so there's no there's no limitation of getting through that door or slowing it down. Uh, and the the room begins to collapse behind you. Um, you all get out, look around, and do not see the diamond with you. But the room beside behind you collapses, and suddenly, the, soon the door itself is filled up with rubble. Water no longer flows in through this door. It ends, and the water starts to drain from underneath your feet as well, more rapidly than you might have expected. Well, I'm glad I was that door open. Much appreciated. Yes, thank you. Nice uh, job. Do we need, uh, does it look like we need to evacuate the entire temple right now or just the room was going down? It seems as though the, the that room itself is the only thing that is collapsing. Okay. I'm sure the diamond's still around. Silas holds on to the staff tighter. Yes. And then you realize your other staff is in the buried ruin somewhere. Dang it. I paid two silver for that staff. Oh <laughs> crap! My uh, my focus is in there too. It mm -hmm. was tied to the staff. <laughs> Shit. Uh, womp, womp. Well, I look longingly back, but things change. We've got a better focus now. I possibly, uh, yeah. Uh, um, we we should make sure everyone's okay, and then we should probably should leave. We may want to come back here later, but I don't know. Yeah, there's a shudder as the entire room seems to shake. Now maybe the building. All right, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Heal up later. Yep. For some reason, it's not letting me actually access the pop-up, but in your roll 20 shortly, you will find an item called Staff of the Harbinger. Uh, read it over, and you'll see that it has uh, features. That might surprise you. Uh, as you uh, exit quickly from the building, I won't make you roll. You know how these doors work. It does slow you down, and with each door that you clear, uh, the entire building seems to shudder and shake. At one point, it feels as though the floor drops an entire foot, and then you hear the sound of rushing water from somewhere else. As you move back through, 
You do not see the bodies of those bandits you had seen before. No sign of them, in fact. Okay, that's a little creepy. You race up to the tower and push through the, the, the open doors, only to find that the open doors now are a foot below the ground. As you climb your way out, you see the, the only remaining part of the structure that was above ground anyway, this, the, the uh, uh, tower, the broken tower, sinking into the dirt. And indeed, the hillside, which once covered over this entire area, seems to grow smaller and smaller until now it's barely a, a hillock, barely, barely a, a, a slope at all. And the rushing water that comes up out of the doors and kind of floods over the top of the tower makes it appear now almost like a rough, wide, uh, I've forgotten the word. That's terrible. <laughs> Lake? Swamp? No, uh, um, uh, water well. It has oh, a, like, a, okay. a like, like a giant well. Okay. Yeah, yeah it has the appearance of a well now. Uh, and, and one could be mistaken from thinking this is a com communal well in a large area, some of which are not dissimilarly shaped inside Aelthwater itself. Being injured and slightly out of his gourd, Silas will pull out a copper and flip it into the well and uh, silently wish uh, for them to be at peace. The copper I'm gonna take disappears from view, stuff. but you feel perhaps a sense of, of satisfaction. Maybe it worked, maybe not. I'm going to assume you make your way back to town. Yeah, looking over or, our shoulders every now and then. Or do you go go, go directly to the uh, the marsh village? Um, I think maybe we should travel for a few minutes to get away from where the temple was, but we probably should take a uh, like a rest for an hour or so and and uh, catch our breath. Okay, you back Probably upward, a good idea. Mm -hmm. retracing your steps. Um, you pass through the stone gates, the remains of the stone gates that are there, noticing that the growth of vines and trees nearby seems to have been accelerated. And as you pass through them, they seem to be pulled down stone by stone into rubble. The cobblestones sink further into the ground grass and moss grow over them, making it almost completely obscured. The trees that you'd seen domed over the pathway fall over on one side, the other side losing all of its limbs and cracking halfway. And that dead tree, the first marker of your path, is now falling apart. You step over it, accidentally catch your foot onto it, and it falls apart into dust. But you made your way back to the Royal Road, somewhere familiar. Some are understandable. The night sky overhead, clouds still obscuring the town, that you're slightly outside of the storm right now. You have a moment's peace, and that's where we'll call it for tonight. Do I still have the uh, brooches I picked up from the bodies? You do. I think I had... Yep, you had three of them, I believe. Okay. And we'll call it there for the evening. Okay, let's say, uh, just as we get ready to rest, Silas will go to Annie and uh, Medrick and just put a, a, a basically hold out a hand. Say, Thank you. Oh, Thank you for problem. helping my people. Uh, just be careful. They might be back for that. Yeah. Yeah. Although he didn't seem interested in it. It's almost like he was testing us. Do you think this temple might be related to the one? And he'll he'll say it just an, uh, loud enough for you two to hear that Cathron was in because it was the, getting the symbols a lot reminded me well. what was oh, the symbols reminded me a lot of what was on the stuff she gave us. So yeah, and he did mention her by name, so chances are he already knows we we've been yeah. in contact with Cathron. We definitely need to go see her next. 
and ask her a few questions. Yes. Then, yeah, he'll just sit down. It's a little disturbing to hear a little disturbing to hear Mira as she kind of giggles a little bit and then laughs. It's a little manic and she's looking over at Silas from time to time with a look of, of admiration, of hope, of surety. Her eyes have returned to that human shape that's most familiar. But every once in a while when she blinks, were they slits up and down, vertical? Like a snake's? Uh, just as a note, uh, before we do finish, Silas is going to try to comfort her, Luther, maybe try to uncrazy her a little. Uh, how is he going uh, to uncrazy her? <laughs> just comfort her, let her know think that things can get back to normal, uh, everything's fine. Okay. Mostly it's just a matter of, here, have some nice calming tea. Perhaps you will be a little less insane in the morning. And as she kind of looks up to you and, and thanks you, uh, it's she doesn't seem concerned. She seems happy, if anything. I did it. I served, I served the mother. I served the mother and I served her well. I did it. Yes. Yes, you did. I have been the vessel. And Luther kind of has that haunted look of, I don't know what you people are up to, but I'm glad she's safe. And that was messed up. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean Silas will also spend that. Well, while we're resting, he'll he'll probably start off with just telling a story, uh, like a local story uh, about how the town first appeared, uh, who landed here, that sort of thing, something historic. Historic but mythical at the same time, because it's probably not true. Um, okay. And uh, after people are sort of calming and resting, then he'll focus on the staff. And on catching it out. You can feel you it reaching out to you. Uh, there's a campfire. Um, Annie, just make sure that you I'm have in, in your notes uh, one set of fine crafted dwarven masonry tools. Nice. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. And, you know, if the place hadn't collapsed, I suppose there might have been a few more things, but there was not really a lot of time for those. That's fine. So, uh, I want to thank my players. Congratulations. I wasn't sure how that was going to go. I really kind of hoped that my spawning bander hob was going to get a chance to spawn some lesser hobs, but you at least get to fight one. Yeah. I don't know, with like six HP left and very few heals. <laughs> uh, it was meant to be the dangerous boss fight for certain, but you guys did get a sparkling well, so congratulations. When he does, Catherine, for healing potions. Off the record. Thanks, Diamond. <laughs> uh... Right. So we will be joining you once again in a couple of weeks. If you've just tuned in and you're wondering, hey, what did I miss? Well, you can always catch it on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ENCAF1, live on Sundays. Uh, slipping to be around 3 o'clock Atlantic now. I think that's probably a more realistic time for us to start. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe running a little longer. Uh, the length of time, it's weird now because the sun has gone down. So I thought, oh, it must be like 7 o'clock. Nope. But uh, we've reached a, a natural conclusion for this evening. You can also find all the previous episodes of this and the previous campaign on youtube.com slash ENCAF1. At least I think it's just that. I think I'm pretty sure it's just that. Look for the uh, playlist, Legends of the Drowned Dials, which is all of it. Legends of Amatia, which is this and more. And this particular campaign, which is LOTDI, The Great Confusion. Thanks again to my players. Before they la launch all the fire engines, I guess we should call mm. this to a close. We shall join you again, hopefully, next week. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Toodles. -bye.